Well, you'll never guess what I'm preaching about tonight. The title of my message is, You've Been Set Up for Breakthrough. God is so funny. My Lord, my Lord. Mm. Aren't you glad that we can feel the presence of the Holy Ghost in this house? Mighty God, mighty God. Thank God we can feel His presence. This whole service has been orchestrated and designed around victory and breakthrough and giants die. The first question tonight on my notes was, I wonder if any of the saints at RPA ever get weak. Thank you. I've been using those Kleenex and um, I've got fuzzies on my face. So if I have a big wad of Kleenex on me, please don't let me... Go eat tonight with Kleenex on my face. Just... I'm letting you laugh for a minute because I'm trying to catch my breath. We, we watch these young people shout, Brother Clanton, remember when we could shout for hours and hours? Now we're old and fat. <laughs> and, and I'm pretty sure I've shouted the strength out of my hairspray tonight <clears throat> as well. So. See, I know, church, that sometimes we get weak. Sometimes we face trials in our lives. Sometimes, I don't know, maybe, maybe not you, but sometimes I face temptation. Sometimes I begin to go through a test of my faith. In this summer recharge last night, I preached about plugging into the power source. And tonight, I know that as much as we get charged up by the power of the Holy Ghost, we yet face trials in our lives. But let me tell you something, child of God, if you were not a threat to the camp of the enemy, you wouldn't face those trials. If you were not a threat to the enemy, he would have no reason to bother you. But see, the issue, church, is not the trial itself, but how we respond in the midst of that trial. The Word of God says this in James chapter 1, beginning in verse 2, my brethren... Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. I don't know about anybody else in this house, but sometimes it's hard to count it joy when I'm facing trouble in my life. But child of God, listen to what the word of the Lord is telling us tonight. Let this trial, count it all trials, so that this patience, this endurance can begin to have its perfect work in you. Church, you need to understand when you begin to walk through things that you've been set up. Oh, you're going to have to do better than that. You've been set up for breakthrough you've been set up 
for victory. You've been set up to be transformed by renewing your mind. You've been set up to be changed from glory to glory, from one experience with the Holy Ghost to the next. You've been set up. Now see, there are some things that I know I've been doing this for a minute. And there are some things that I understand. I know by experience that God has never failed me. I know that God will always come through. Now see, when we started out for the kingdom, we didn't always understand how to count it all joy. But now I know that if God did it before, he can do it again. Your pastor had been lamenting over not hearing a specific song. So for just a minute, he'll do it again. <laughs> Let that satisfy you and hold you till the next time, pastor. <laughs> God can turn my test to testimony and he can turn my sorrow into joy he can deliver he can save and he can still heal now whatever i face i know that god can work it out because giants still die church let me tell you something tonight walk with me through this for just a minute because it drives me crazy as a evangelist it drives me crazy to, to see people shout and carry on in church but when trials come their way they're falling all apart it drives me crazy that one day somebody's on fire for God and running the aisles and speaking in tongues and then you don't see them in church for the next six months. It drives me crazy. Some might say you don't have to drive there. It's a short walk. Church, count it all joy. When you fall into various trials, knowing that this test is going to work out in your favor. Count it all joy, knowing that you've simply been set up for a breakthrough. Romans 8, 28 said this, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. Stuff doesn't always work out for us if we're called according to our purpose. But see, if we're called according to his purpose, if we're all about giving God the glory, then no matter what I face, it's going to work out for my good. Now understand this church, God does not do bad things to us or put us in bad positions to test us. Many of us were raised with that though. God gave you cancer to get, get your attention. God had to put me flat on my back in order to get my attention. Now, I'm a dad. That's the proudest title I wear. And so as a parent, I teach my children things. But in order to teach my seven-year-old that the stove is hot, I'm not going to take his hand and put it on the burner. That would be child abuse. And if I know that, then surely our Heavenly Father knows that. He's not going to burn you to teach you about the fire. But when life happens, and it does, when life brings trials into our lives, when, when we get ourselves into, ma into messes, or whatever the enemy throws at us, whatever the enemy means for evil and destruction in our lives, count it all joy because this heavenly father of mine is going to work all of that out for my good. 
when things come into my life. Just understand, church, I've been set up for God to show himself real in my life and to the people around me. The Bible is full of examples of how things happened or went on in people's lives. But in that place, God turned those things around and worked them for good. How many of you remember the story of the woman with the issue of blood? All of those years, she had been sick. Now understand something about this woman. Because of this issue of blood in her life, she had become stooped over and bent low. Now see, God didn't do this to her knowing that one day Jesus was going to pass her way. But something had happened in her life that caused her to have this issue of blood. But then one day, I heard that Jesus is about to pass this way. Now I'm going through this thing and I've been afflicted with this issue. Jesus is coming. I think I'll just sit. And I'll wait for him to notice that I need something. But wait, this little woman said, if I can just touch the hem of, I don't have to get all up in his face. I just need to get close enough to touch the bottom of his garment. So there's a crowd all around him, throngs of people all around him. And this little woman in her weakened condition, in this state with this issue of blood, her body wracked in pain, stooped over, bowed. All I can see is your feet. But I hear a noise. I hear Jesus coming this way. Excuse me. Excuse me. Pardon me. Pardon me. I need to. Jesus is coming this way. She always hits people. Jesus is coming this way. It doesn't matter that all these other people are going, what are you doing, lady? What are you trying to do? I'm pushing through because I've got to get to, I just need to touch just a little bit of it. And when she did, Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? The people around him said, what are you crazy? What do you mean who touched you? Look at all these people. People shouting and carrying on all around. But in the midst of all of that, somebody touched me. Church, don't just be one of the crowd, but press into a place that will stop him in his tracks and say, Somebody touched me. I see all of them and they're shouting, Pastor. They're, they're feeling my presence. They're, they're enjoying my presence. But in the midst of all of that, somebody touched me. Church, we spend a lot of our time waiting for Jesus to touch us. But how about we begin to press into a place knowing that I may be bent low right now. I may be going through something, but I've just been set up for breakthrough. I've been set up for healing. I've been set up for deliverance. I've been set up for a miracle. And I'm not leaving this place until I touch him. Think about when Lazarus died. They sent word for Jesus. Come, our brother is very sick. And Jesus tarried. He waited a few days. Now, know this. Jesus didn't kill Lazarus. But life was happening to Lazarus. 
and in the midst of life happening. How many of you know that death is a part of life? So Lazarus died. But church, they all had just been set up for a breakthrough. They had just been set up for God to get some glory from that situation. The storm on the Sea of Galilee. Jesus said, you all go on, get in the boat and cross over and, and I'll be there. I'll meet you on the other side. Now, see, there's something about that. He said, I will meet you on the other side. He knew he, he, that they were getting there. Jesus didn't send them off into the middle of that storm. But they began to travel to the other side. Listen, church, listen to that. We've begun to travel to the other side. And in the midst of that journey, a storm came up and it began to rock the boat. But in the midst of that storm, Jesus began to walk out across the water. All inside that boat, people began to be scared. Oh my God, it's a ghost. Uh -uh. But Jesus said, Peter, come here. Come here. I didn't do this storm to scare all of you and to prove a point. But as long as this storm has come up, let me show you how powerful I can be. Come on, get out of the boat and come to me. Uh, well, Peter first said, Lord, if that's really you, tell me to come on. Okay, come on. Peter stepped out of the boat and he began to walk across the water. You all know the story. I don't have to preach that message. But see, as long as he stayed focused on Jesus, he was able to walk across the waves. But when he took his eyes off the Lord and began to look at his circumstance, he began to sink. How many of us have ever been in that place? I was okay as long as I was focused on what Jesus was doing for me. But when I began to look at my finances, when I began to look at my job, when I began to look at my children, when I began to look at my marriage, when I began to look at my circumstance, church, understand those things that we face in our life. It's not about the trial itself, but the way we respond. Count it all joy and understand that you've simply been set up for God to do something. Church, these are examples from the word of God. I have my own testimonies of how life dealt me a blow. But see, I've trusted God long enough that I know of an assurance that weeping may endure for the night but joy comes in the morning weeping may endure for the night but count it all joy brothers and sisters joy is coming in the morning understand church the power in your obedience, the power of your shout, the power of your worship. Yes. Let me tell you a story. Picture it. Fort Worth, 2005. <clears throat> I was going through one of the most devastating things ever in my life struggling some of you may remember that see because God is so good to us in the midst of that I was going through a horrible horrible time and, and this was a, a situation that that went on for months and, and one night in the midst of that I church was about to start and I looked up and the spirit of God had told brother and sister shave to come over to my church and when they walked in I just began to weep because I knew God had sent them for me and uh, not prepared for anything, but 
I said, Sister Shay, preach tonight. She got up and she preached. And she preached exactly what God had for us in that moment. But during this period of time, one night during service, I was sitting at the organ, I'm playing and church is going on and it wasn't anything spectacular happening. People weren't shouting, we were worshiping and people were, were, were enjoying the service, but nothing major going on. And the spirit of God said, get up and shout. And I said, no. And the Holy Ghost said, you need to shout. And I said, no. And the Holy Ghost said, don't wait till the battle is over. There's power in your praise. Shout. And I said, God, I am not fixing a shout. No, that is dumb. Nobody's shouting. It is not that kind of service. I'm going to look like a fool to get up and shout. No, I'm not doing that. So, so during this song that's going on, I don't remember it, even what we were singing at the time. But in my mind, I'm singing and yet arguing with the Holy Ghost about whether or not to get up and shout. And I was determined, no, I'm not shouting. And the Holy Ghost kept just nagging and nagging and nagging. You all know how that is sometimes. So finally I said, fine, I'll shout. So I slid out of the organ, and stood up, And I began to, well, let me tell you something about the power in your obedience. About three steps in, something began to happen on the inside of me. And in just a minute, the power of an almighty God began to move. See, church, there's power in your praise. There's power in your shouts. But see, wait a minute. You all are yelling at the wrong place. Because the breakthrough was not that I obeyed God and got up to shout. But the next day, the very next day, my phone rings. And on the other end of the phone was the message coming. That all of this that you've been going through is over. It's over. And I hung up the phone and I began to weep. And the Holy Ghost said, Aren't you glad you shouted? Church, understand you've been set up. For breakthrough, when I understand the greatness of this almighty God, and when we can understand that if we were not a threat to the enemy, there would be no need for attack. But in the midst of whatever I face, I've simply been set up for God to show himself real and mighty. Child of God, don't fall to pieces when the rug is pulled out from under you. Child of God, don't wallow in your pain when life knocks the wind out of you. Because there's something down on the inside of you. Now, I already read Romans chapter 8 verse 28. But I want us to look at what verses 26 and 27 said. Likewise, the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, also helps in our weaknesses. Come on, you better hear that. Likewise, the Holy Ghost helps in our weaknesses. For we don't know what we should pray as we ought. 
but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. All things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. I've been set up. I've been set up for breakthrough. See, I've been saved and I'm sanctified and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And that Holy Ghost helps me in my weakness to overcome my situations. I may not know what to pray or how to pray, but I can begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I can begin to call on the name of Jesus and that name which causes every demon and devil of hell to tremble. That Holy Ghost inside of me begins to make an intercession to bring us through our trial. See, church. When you're facing a bad time in your life, that's not the time to duck your tail and run. As a pastor, so many times, just tonight I got a text just before church started. Somebody going through something. Pastor, I'm going to be out for a few weeks because I got to do me. I got to get me together. Stupid. Come on. That is the dumbest thing I've ever, especially from somebody that's supposed to be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. That's stupid. Of all times, when you're going through something, when your feet have been kicked out from under you, crawl to the house of God and wait for the Spirit of God to do something about it. My God. In this day and age, church people have been conditioned to just sit out and wait for it to be over. Somehow, some way, the church has managed to raise up a bunch of morons You need the family of God. You need the family of God. Because if one can put a thousand to flight, then two can put ten thousand to flight. When you're in trouble, understand, child of God, you've just been set up for a breakthrough. Don't even try to rob the people of God around you from seeing what God is going to do in your life. My God, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. My God, my God, Uh, 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 that might have been my flesh, but that might have been for somebody. My God, my God, I've been set up. I've been set up. I was framed. But I've got somebody on my side that's going to prove the enemy wrong. My God, my God. My God, my God. The word of God said it's that Holy Ghost inside of us that begins to make intercession. Church, understand this. That 1 Corinthians chapter 14 tells us that it's being able to speak in other tongues that edifies our flesh. It gives strength to our body. And the word of God said it's that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. He will quicken your mortal bodies. Let God be God. 
get out of the way and let God be God. Whatever you're facing, whatever trial, whatever sickness, whatever pain, know that you've simply been set up because that same spirit that raised Christ from that same Holy Ghost lives in me and he will indeed give strength to my mortal body. Church, you can make it through. Mighty God, mighty God. This power of the Holy Ghost. There's an old song that said, I've got it. I've got it. There's something about the power of the Holy. I can't explain it. But I got it. Hey. God, my God, my God. Come on, stand to your feet and give God some praise. Come on, church, stand to your feet and give God some praise. My God, my God. Mighty God, mighty God. Church, understand this. If this Holy Ghost is more than just a Sunday show, if this is my daily bread, my life, my being, then I can count it all joy knowing that God is working all things for my good. And when I come out on the other side, I'll have more faith than when I went in. I'll have more endurance than when I went in. I'll have more patience than when I went in. Church, I've been set up. My God, my God. Oh, my God. Come on. Somebody, don't wait till your battle is over. Begin to shout unto God with the voice of triumph. My God, my God, my God. Oh, mighty God. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Oh, my God, my God. I began to feel this in my spirit before I ever got to Phoenix. When the Holy Ghost began to lay this on my heart for this service tonight, someone in this house has been questioning. Someone's been wondering why I pray and I have a real relationship with the Lord. So why do I face these things? Why can't I shake this thing in my life? Why can't I come out of this part of my life? Why am I facing this sort of trial? Child of God, this is your word. This is your answer. It rains on the just and the unjust alike. Stuff happens, life happens, and beyond that, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness in high places. Understand, child of God, the enemy wants nothing more but to keep you from everything that God has for you. So he begins to throw these things in our way because he's too dumb to know that all he's done is set you up for a breakthrough. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. I'm going to stop. That's all. That's all. But church, whoever that is, that's been going I don't get it. 
I don't understand. How can this be happening to me? If that's you, get to this altar right now. Cut. Don't lie to me. There's somebody in this place that for whatever reason, you seem to teeter on the edge. Always. I'm in. Maybe not. I'm. Uh, no, I'm in. No, I, I don't know. The Spirit of God is saying to you, just get in. Just get in. Somebody needs to receive the word tonight and know, Pastor Evangelist, I understand. I understand now because of the word that I've just been set up for my breakthrough. So I'm not going to wait until I come out on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and enter in and worship the Lord now. My God, my God. I'm going to do this tonight as well. If you need prayer, this altar is open. If you need to worship, do what you do. Yeah, come on. If you need prayer, I'll pray with you. Sister Shay will help me pray. Youth pastor will help me pray tonight. But see, I believe this. In the midst of this summer recharge, some of you know how to touch God all by yourself so if you know how to touch God then touch him press your way in and touch him tonight mighty God mighty God Father God we worship you tonight Lord we worship you tonight Father God I thank you for your word and Lord I thank you that your word will not return void but accomplish that we you set it forth to accomplish. Father God, have your way right now. Have your way right now, Jesus.
120 to receive the power God promised them. The Holy Ghost fell upon each one as the Spirit gave out They spoke in tongues. got the Holy Ghost down in my soul, just like the Bible said. I've got the Holy Ghost down in my soul, just like the Bible said. Well, I've been to the water and I've been baptized. My soul got happy and I'm satisfied. I wouldn't
Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Oh, I know joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Joy. A miracle is mine. A miracle is mine. A miracle today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. A miracle today is mine. Hallelujah! Victory! Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Right now, thank you for my miracle. Right now, hallelujah. 